The movie introduces Max, a junior lawyer, as he heads to a cafe to arrange a meeting with his team. Before the meeting begins, he receives a video call from his wife, Shu, and their daughter, Nancy. They miss him because he's been busy with work and hasn't been able to come home for a month. Inside the cafe, where Max is about to have his meeting, another group of people is also gathered for their discussion. Alice, the leader of this group, arrives to start their meeting. During Max's meeting, he sees his younger brother Jerry, who seems engaged in a meaningful discussion. When Max greets Jerry, his younger brother tries to distance himself as if he doesn't want to acknowledge their relationship, and it shocks Max because Jerry often visits him at his apartment. Jerry asks Max not to disturb him any further, leaving Max puzzled about Jerry's behavior, especially since they are close. Afterwards, Jerry lies to his group, claiming that he doesn't know Max well, merely mentioning that Max gave him his business card some time ago. Roxy, a member of Ellis's group, approaches Max and asks for his business card, saying she might need legal help in the future. Max was occupied with his work that night and couldn't return home. He had to stay in the office to complete his tasks. His wife, Chu, understood that Max had been working hard lately. While Max was still at the office trying to meet his deadlines, Sue heard the doorbell ring. It was Jerry, Max's younger brother. Sue and their daughter Nancy were happy to see Jerry, but their happiness turned into shock when they saw that Jerry was covered in wounds. Suddenly, a stranger appeared and tragically shot Jerry right in front of Max's wife and daughter. The following morning, Max was in the middle of a client meeting when Detective Santiago and his team arrived to deliver the devastating news about Jerry's death, Shu's murder, and Nancy's disappearance. Max, overwhelmed with grief and panic, interrupted his meeting and followed Santiago to the police station to gather more information about his family. At the police station, Max was asked by the authorities. He wore a look of sadness and anger due to the loss of his family. The police had not yet identified the culprits behind the horrific crimes. Santiago, sympathizing with Max's situation, met with the junior lawyer and pledged to help him find those responsible for the murders and Nancy's abduction. On another occasion, a female detective named Vargas accompanied Max to his apartment. Max was met with chaos and bloodstains as he entered his apartment. He couldn't help but shed tears when he saw a picture Nancy had drawn. Suddenly, a man named Dio, who was one of the killers, tried to silence Max and demanded that he stay quiet. After a struggle, Max managed to break free from Dio's grip. Surprisingly, Dio had no intention of harming Max. Instead, he revealed that Jerry, Max's younger brother, was an aspiring police officer who had been killed after being found while infiltrating a criminal gang. Dio also handed Max a key to Jerry's secret warehouse, where Max could find information about Ellis, the mastermind behind his family's murder. Upon hearing this shocking information, Max rushed out of the apartment through the back door, heading towards Jerry's secret warehouse. Detective Vargas, who had become suspicious when Max didn't leave the apartment, decided to follow him. When she arrived at Max's apartment, Vargas didn't find Max, but encountered Dio instead. She shot him because he had aided Max's escape. Injured, Dio then detonated a grenade he had prepared earlier, causing an explosion that destroyed Max's apartment and killed them both. Max had reached Jerry's secret warehouse near the harbor. Inside, he discovered various items belonging to Jerry and evidence of his involvement in a human organ trafficking syndicate led by Ellis. Max was shocked to learn about Jerry's criminal activities, particularly how he had stolen money from the organ sales and hidden it in the warehouse. Fueled by anger and a desire for revenge against Ellis, who had taken away his entire family, Max decided to take matters into his own hands. Starting that night, he crafted several throwing knives, which he planned to use in his mission for revenge. On the other side, Ellis and his gang held a secret meeting where he ordered his men to disperse and abduct more children for organ harvesting. They still needed more organs to sell, even though they had already kidnapped Max's daughter. In a fit of frustration over the money Jerry had hidden, Alice took out his anger by torturing a man to death. His henchmen, accustomed to such brutality, stood by without intervening. After the meeting concluded, Alice and his crew prepared to leave. 
However, when they reached the parking lot, one of Alice's henchmen, Mike, discovered a flat tire on his motorcycle, which Max secretly sabotaged. Alice offered to give Mike a ride home and instructed another henchman, Tommy, to take Mike's motorcycle to a repair shop. Tommy followed orders but stopped to urinate in the middle of the road, where Max ambushed him with a throwing knife he had prepared earlier. Max also attacked another henchman with a machet, killing him. On another day, Alice became increasingly frustrated over Jerry's hidden money, with no leads to find it. Shortly after, some of Alice's henchmen brought in a man named Rye, who had willingly come to meet Alice, lured by the promise of money. Quickly Rye, brimming with confidence about becoming wealthy, behaved arrogantly, even putting his feet up on the table, which annoyed Alice. Alice grabbed a cleaning cloth and a piece of plastic, spreading them out in front of Rye. Meanwhile, Roxy retrieved a sharp object from a box brought in by a man in a yellow shirt and used it to kill Rye. After Rye's death, his body was placed on the plastic, and Ellis's henchman immediately prepared to harvest his organs. On a different day, Max found himself behind a car driven by one of Ellis's henchmen named Juan. Frustration welled within Juan as Max drove slowly in front of him. After several impatient horn honks, Max finally stopped his car on a quiet street. Irritated, Max maneuvered his car beside Juan's. He attacked Juan through the open car window with a throwing knife. Max didn't care about the pedestrians who witnessed his actions and ruthlessly struck Juan, ensuring his target was dead. He also took Juan's phone. The next day, Max returned to Jerry's warehouse to store Juan's car and track Alice's location using Juan's phone. Max set up a trap in the warehouse for Alice's henchmen, who had come looking for Juan. Then he went alone to Alice's headquarters, pointing a gun at Alice and demanding information about his daughter's whereabouts. Alice refused to cooperate, and Junior, one of Alice's henchmen, secretly attacked Max from behind, causing the lawyer to lose consciousness. When Max woke up, he was tied up, and Junior, the guard, was heating a wire to torture Max by piercing his finger. Junior revealed that he had been involved with Sue before killing her. Max endured the pain and anger, unable to move his bound body. Shortly after, Ellis and his right-hand man, Big Jayant, arrived to stop Junior's torture. Ellis wanted Max alive to extract information about the money Jerry had hidden. After gathering the critical information, Ellis swiftly took Big John and Roxy to head for Jerry's warehouse. Meanwhile, Junior received orders to guard the headquarters, ensuring Max couldn't escape. Later, while Junior was dozing off, Santiago, who had been lurking nearby, emerged and pointed a gun at Junior's head. He then brought him into the room where Max was held captive. Max, now free, made Santiago faint to prevent the detective from interfering with his plan to confront Junior. Simultaneously, Big John and Roxy searched for the hidden money at Jerry's warehouse. Eventually, Big John found the cash in a bank, hidden within a box. He seemed delighted by the find, but Roxy began to suspect something was amiss when she noticed the money bag was connected to a long wire linked to a grenade. She attempted to warn her partner, but before she could utter a word, Big John pulled the bag, triggering an explosion within the warehouse. Meanwhile, Ellis was taken aback while waiting in the car as Jerry's warehouse suddenly rose in flames. Back at Ellis's headquarters, a now-conscious Santiago found himself inside a car. Inside the headquarters, Junior appeared lifeless, tied to a chair with his abdomen exposed. Upon discovering this, Alice started to panic, realizing he had underestimated Max. The confrontation intensified as Max led Alice to an old factory, intentionally luring him. As Alice arrived at the building, Max was ready to confront the boss of a dangerous human organ trafficking gang with his gun, but Santiago showed up just in time and urged Max to trust the authorities to investigate his family's murder. Max, however, refused to listen to Santiago and held on to his desire for revenge. Santiago then brought up Max's past as a former Marine and his decision to become a lawyer because he had witnessed injustices, especially the cover-up of his mother's abuse by her commanding officer. Santiago tries to convince Max to reconsider his plan for revenge. Max stole silent, carefully considering Santiago's words, the detective now wanted to apprehend Ellis. 
However, Santiago suddenly changed his mind and decided not to handcuff Ellis. He saw Max as someone who had lost his family because of the Mafia's actions, just like himself. So, Santiago left, allowing Max to go after the criminal boss for revenge. Without hesitation, Max attacked Alice, who claimed that Nancy had been killed after her organs were taken and sold to different countries. Although Alice resisted, Max eventually overpowered him to satisfy his thirst for revenge. Max picked up a spiked baseball bat and used it to fatally beat Alice. A few days later, the news about Alice's body being found in a factory had spread to various news outlets, including television. Even the chief of police knew about it. In the movie's final scene, Santiago returns to his hometown in Mexico to spend time with his family. But then he got a sudden message from Max, who had become a hitman to seek justice. Max requested data about the criminals he wanted to take down. Santiago was enthusiastic to help and gave Max the names of the criminals still on the run and where to find them.